Part 3. How to Tap into the Mother Load. Chapter 10. Meditation 101. You are never alone or helpless. The force that guides the stars guides you too. Sri Sri Anadamurti, Indian philosopher, social revolutionary, author, composer. Meditation, otherwise known as sitting still and thinking about nothing, is one of those things that can be just as stupidly simple as it is surprisingly hard. It reminds me of those contests where a bunch of people stand around a brand new car or truck, and whoever leaves their hands on it the longest gets to take it home. The winner winds up on the front page of her local paper, victorious and sleepy, smiling from behind the wheel of her newly won ride with a thumbs up for the camera. Terrytown's very own Jill Boonder was the proud winner of the 2012 Chevy standoff held in Green Bay, Wisconsin this past weekend. Jill beat out 68 other contestants from around the country by standing for 173 hours and 9 minutes in the Home Depot parking lot with her hands placed with unyielding determination on the hood of what would soon be her new Chevy Silverado. I'm so excited I won, she said. There was some stiff competition, some folks who I thought would never back down, but I really brought my A-game. With meditation, the simplicity is equally misleading. That's all I have to do to connect with Source Energy? Sit there and do nothing? It can't be that easy. Well, it is. And it's not. Which is why it's called a meditation practice. When you shut up and meditate for even five minutes and start to really notice the thoughts that are swirling around in your brain, it's rather illuminating. If you're like most people, the majority of your thoughts are about as valuable and interesting as a bunch of two-year-olds fighting over a sippy cup. The goal is to quiet your mind of the chatter so you can connect to source energy and listen to your inner guidance. I'm going to give you the breakdown on how to meditate, but first I want to recommend that you start small and work your way up. Try meditating for 5 to 10 minutes each day at first and add on time as you get less squirmy. There's no right way or wrong way to do this. No set amount of time, no correct things to feel, no rules about how you have to sit or where you have to do it. All that matters is that you do it if you want to massively improve your life. It's like drinking lots of water or exercising regularly or not bad-mouthing other people. You don't have to do it, and the temptation to blow it off is extremely large, but if you make a habit of it, not only will you start to crave it, but your entire life will change. Because when we meditate, we practice getting into the vortex and connecting to source energy, which automatically brings us into the present moment, raises our frequency, opens us up to receive unlimited information and ideas, relaxes us, relieves stress, strengthens our intuition and ability to focus, allows us to hear our inner voice more clearly, fills us with light and love, puts us in a good mood, helps us love ourselves. Meditating and being in the vortex is like riding the airstream of awesomeness. Here are the extremely short and simple steps of some different ways to meditate. Basic meditation. Sit in a comfortable cross-legged position on the floor or in a chair with your hands on your knees or in your lap. Sit up straight and relax your entire face, especially your jaw and your forehead. Close your eyes or, if it helps you focus and not fall asleep, keep them open and gaze softly at a spot on the ground a couple feet in front of you. Focus on your breathing. Notice it moving in and out of your body. You don't have to breathe in any special way, just focus on it. Gently release any thoughts that come into your brain and refocus on your breathing. Keep your mind as clear and empty as possible and listen for intuitive hits that may or may not come through. Ta-da! That's it. Options and Suggestions 1. Set a timer. You've got enough distracting thoughts without checking the clock to see how long you've been at it every 30 seconds. 2. Light a candle and focus on it. Sometimes having a place to rest your eyes can help you get centered and in the zone. Sit and face a candle that you place on the floor in front of you while you meditate and see if that works for you. 3. Imagine a bright beam of light shooting down from the sky, shining in through the top of your head, running through your entire body, out your bottom, and up to the sky again so that it makes a complete circle. I sometimes find this easier to focus on than the ever-popular breath method, 
Plus, it fills me up with energy and light and makes me feel more deeply connected to source energy. Four, use a mantra. Sometimes when the squirrels in my head are particularly active, I bring in a mantra to chase them out. I repeat a word or a phrase in my mind like love or thank you or yes please or om, something that makes me feel good and is fairly neutral. But you could use a mantra like meatloaf, I guess, if that's your thing. Five, try and meditate first thing in the morning so you're not distracted by whatever the day brings. Your conscious mind will also be more quiet, having just woken up from sleeping. Six, if there's something in your life that you're working on or through, you can set an intention or ask for help during your meditation practice. Meditating is about receiving information from the universe. Setting intentions and praying are about sending information out to the universe. There are two ways you can do this. A, start with a question, something like, how do I deal with my pain in the ass teenage son? And see what, if any, answers download while you meditate. Or B, meditate first, open up the channel, clear out the chatter, and then ask your question in a space of clarity and connection and see what, if anything, comes to you. Guided Meditation There are countless CDs and DVDs that various hippies and guru types have made over the years to walk you through meditations. I suggest taking the guided route when you're first starting out if you're having trouble wrangling your mind into submission. They make great training wheels, and I still use them occasionally, especially if I want to focus on something specific. There are also guided meditation centers all over the place, and it's really nice every once in a while to meditate in a group. You can really feed off that energy and get the discipline to sit there for an extended period of time. Do a search for meditation centers and ashrams in your area. Sometimes yoga studios hold guided meditations too. Chanting. Chanting is also a great way to get into a meditative state. You can repeat a mantra over and over out loud on your own, or if you prefer to avoid getting busted and very possibly ridiculed, you can do it in a group by attending a kirtan meditation class. Kirtan meditation involves call and response chanting of Sanskrit mantras or devotional songs, and you can attend classes at a yoga studio or a meditation center. Also check out Transcendental Meditation Instruction a form that involves repeating mantras and sitting twice a day for around 20 minutes at a time. I've had some pretty profound experiences while meditating. I've seen the walls melt around me, felt like I was levitating, and have experienced such a state of euphoria that it almost hurt. I've also had extremely unprofound experiences. I've fallen asleep, spent the entire time squirming and thinking about what to make for lunch, and have been totally in the zone and then realized I was in the zone and thought, awesome, I'm in the zone, thereby pulling myself out of the zone. The important thing is that you keep showing up. Even if you're only in the zone for one collective minute out of the 30 minutes you've been sitting there, it will eventually start making a notable difference in your life. I think meditation is even more essential now that we have all this technology at our fingertips and distraction has become a way of life. While I truly believe that we, as a species, are becoming more and more conscious, I'm amazed by how, at the same time, our attention spans are rapidly shrinking. I was playing tennis the other day with someone who got a text, pulled out his phone, and checked it in the middle of a point. It's astonishing that we can still speak in full sentences. Aside from being one of the most powerful tools in our consciousness-raising toolbox, meditation is a much-needed respite from the madness and will help us from becoming a bunch of scatterbrained ding-dongs as we zoom around our brave and extremely exciting new world.